The String Couple to Pendulum Our experimental MBA course at the University of San Francisco in International Business Economics was introduced by a physical model of the string coupled pendulum. We were also presented with a computer generated emulation of the objective pendulum's motion and invited to consider whether or not the emulator's existence indicated that the physical pendulum's motion was, in some sense, understood. Understanding by way of emulation was to be the method of our investigation into economic causality. A pendulum is described by the geometry determined by its string length, and its dynamics are propelled by a local gravitational field. The economy is described by a geometry specifying its technical and utility trade-offs, and its dynamics are propelled by the commodity's natural rates of physical turnover. In either system, understanding takes place in terms of discerning how the geometry controls the dynamics. String-coupled pendula can present some interesting dynamics, such as the biharmonic oscillations showing here. While YouTube already has several presentations on the string-coupled pendulum, ours might be one of the more interesting because it introduces the mathematics needed to describe all of the pendulum's behavior modes. The show notes below link to hard copies of these detailed mathematical developments, as well as to the software emulators that were used in creating our video. If you wish to create a physical coupled pendulum for yourself, begin with a simple pendulum, then create an identical pendulum next to it. Choose a convenient distance down from the support points and kink both pendula at that point. Finally, Join the two pendula with a third horizontal strand. Check your work for good side-to-side -side symmetry. Symmetry is essential for clear dynamic patterns. Your finished product should look like this. When motion is initiated by displacing one of the pendulum weights into the viewing plane, it should behave like this. Once you have your pendulum put together, you might wish to particularize it with a few physical measurements. These will key your particular model into our online emulators. A horizontal segment H specifies the distance between the pendulum support points. Another horizontal segment S is the length of the span where the pendula are joined. A vertical segment Q is the distance from the supports down to the span. A vertical segment L is the distance from the span down to the pendulum weights. Let us now draw your attention to the coordinate frame we will be using. A unit vector X aligns with the direction joining the pendulum support points. A unit vector Z aligns with gravity G. Gravitational acceleration is among the specifiers of the pendulum's motion. Here on Earth, g is 32 feet per second squared. If you would like to see how your pendulum would behave on the Moon or on Jupiter, you can substitute different values for g into our online emulators. A unit vector y is perpendicular to the xz plane. Most presentations of string-coupled pendula are generated by an initial displacement of one pendulum weight in the y direction. Here you can see the motion proceeding from a displacement of red. White starts from rest and is driven into greater and greater oscillations as red exhausts its energy in driving white. Then the process reverses as white exhausts itself in driving red back to its initial state of displacement and motion. Biharmonic motions also follows from an initial displacement in the x direction. Again, red exhausts itself in driving white into a state that mirrors what red was doing when the motion began, and white then repeats the process. Note that the biharmonics in the x and y directions occur at different frequencies. Let us now use our device to generate some biharmonic waveforms for closer examination.
you will note that the developing wave forms are governed by two sinusoidal functions. One, having the lower frequency, governs an outer sine wave. The other, having the higher frequency, governs an inner sine wave. We will freeze time here and spatialize it with a vertical axis. Horizontal axes P1 and P2 will be laid in to denote the positions of our pendulum weights. Here we can see that an initial displacement D along the P1 axis gives rise to a biharmonic wave pattern that can be described by an equation involving two cosine terms having different frequencies. It will be noted that these frequencies are expressed in terms of two meta frequencies, omega 1 and omega 2. The first frequency is one half of omega 1 plus omega 2, and the second frequency is one half of omega 1 minus omega 2. It might not be immediately obvious why we chose to decompose the oscillator's frequencies in this way. That will become apparent in due course. For now, let us visualize these frequencies in terms of the periods they impose on our biharmonic wave pattern. The smaller of our two frequencies specifies the period of the outer wave pattern. The larger of our two frequencies specifies the period of the inner wave pattern. We note that the second pendulum is driven into motion by the initial displacement d of the first pendulum and we see that it recapitulates the first pendulum's motion in a pattern that remains 90 degrees out of phase with its companion. We therefore surmise that the second pendulum is governed by an equation involving two sine terms having frequencies corresponding to those of the first pendulum. Assuming that these observations correctly and fully describe the pendulum's motion, we can state that solution to the problem of predicting its behaviors is simply a matter of determining omega 1 and omega 2. A full determination of these meta frequencies involves simultaneous solution of a complicated system of second order differential equations. This lengthy algebraic exercise is fully presented in the papers linked to the show notes below. Such lengthy mathematical developments are not well expressed in a lecture format such as this. We can, however, present the solution for inspection, and proceed with a few experiments that, while not dispositive, should be adequately convincing as to the correctness of the solution offered. Here we can see that the omega 1 and the omega 2, for y motion and for x motion, are very simple functions of the pendulum's dimensions and the local gravitational constant. Note that the omega 2 for both y motion and x motion is the same. They are both the natural frequency of a simple pendulum of length L plus Q. The omega 1 for X motion is the natural frequency of a simple pendulum of length L. And the omega 1 for Y motion is the natural frequency of a simple pendulum having a length somewhere between L and L plus Q. As the span S approaches its lower limit of zero, the omega 1 of y approaches the omega 1 of x. And as s approaches its upper limit of h, omega 2 y approaches the omega 2 of x. These results are perhaps elegant to an extent that they will be rejected as impossibly simplistic. We will therefore close with a number of simple observations that should confirm our results to a degree that will validate the lengthier algebraic presentations linked in the show notes below. Let us return to our earlier inference of the equations for the pendulum weight's positions, P1 and P2, as they follow from an initial displacement D of one weight in one of the coordinate directions. If the initial displacement of P1 generates a cosine pattern in P1 and a sine pattern in P2. Then it follows that an initial displacement of P2 generates a cosine pattern in P2 and a sine pattern in P1. So here we have the complete equations for P1 and P2 based on any combination of initial displacements 
D1 and D2. Our computational strategy from here will be to recast these equations for the cases when D1 equals D2 and for when D1 equals minus D2. Using familiar trigonometric identities for the sums and differences of angles, we can reduce these equations to specifiers of simple harmonic motion governed by the pendulum's metafrequencies omega 1 and omega 2. When D1 equals D2, the pendulums behave alike in a simple harmonic pattern governed by the metafrequency omega 2. When D1 equals minus D2, the pendulum's behaviors mirror one another in a simple harmonic pattern governed by the metafrequency omega 1. As formal development of these two equations is a bit more complicated than would be convenient for our lecture format, we will again defer to the papers linked in the show notes below. We have asserted that identical initial displacements of both pendulum's weights results in a simple harmonic oscillation at the metafrequency omega 2. This allows us to directly observe the omega 2 for y motion must be that of a simple pendulum of length L plus Q. Repeating the same logic for identical displacements in the x direction would predict the same result for omega 2. This result is a bit more difficult to visualize, but its validity becomes inescapable when we consult the analytic premises behind derivations of the frequencies for simple pendulum. Displacements of the pendulum weights in the xy plane are so small in relation to a pendulum's length that the weights move horizontally and never vertically. Our result for omega 2x can be verified by constructing a simple pendulum of length L plus Q beside your strained coupled pendulum, giving all three pendulum weights the same initial displacement and observing the subsequent motions occur at the same frequency. We have also asserted that equal and opposite initial displacements of both pendulum weights results in simple harmonic oscillations at the metafrequency omega 1. This allows us to directly observe that the omega 1, or x motion, must be that of a simple pendulum of length L. Here we see that the opposing forces generated by the two halves of the pendulum effectively freeze the area above the span S, and the pendulum can only move as if suspended from a rigid support located at a length L above the pendulum weights. Repeating this same logic for identical displacements in the Y direction, we would find that the opposing forces generated by the two halves of the pendulum effectively freeze the midpoint of the span S while allowing the span to rotate in the xy plane. The ensuing simple harmonic oscillations can be observed as those of a simple pendulum having an equivalent length E somewhere between L and L plus Q. This particular equation for omega 1y cannot be definitively established except through the lengthy algebraic development in the papers linked below. We can, however, comment on its correctness at either limit of the permissible values for S. As S approaches H, the forces coupling the pendulum's two halves will become less and less binding. If S could equal H, then the premises of vanishingly small horizontal displacements would have the two pendula of length L plus Q behaving independently of one another for any and all combinations of initial displacements. As S approaches zero, the forces coupling the pendulum's two halves will tend to freeze the span's midpoint, while allowing less and less rotation of the span in the xy plane. If S could equal zero, then the premise of point masses for the pendulum weights would allow the two weights to pass through one another in the yz plane. As was the case for X motion, the opposing forces generated by the two halves of the pendulum again freeze the area above the span S, and omega 1 Y would reduce to omega 1 X. Noting that omega 2 is the same for impulses in either the X or Y directions, we see a possibility for simplifying our notations. 
omega 2 x and omega 2 y can both be replaced by the single variable omega 0, and omega 1 x and omega 1 y then need only be distinguished as omega x and omega y. Entering these simplifications into our earlier expressions for the positions of the pendulum's weights p1 and p2 yields these equations. Here unit vectors x caret and y caret establish the directions of motion. Four initial displacements, d1x, d1y, d2x, and d2y, can be specified as the initiators of motion. And the pendulum's dimensions, h, s, l, and q, enter these equations through omega 0, omega x, and omega y. The correctness of these findings can be evaluated by investigating our online emulator. You will find its URL in the show notes below. The emulation program presents an opportunity to specify the dimensions of any pendulum you might care to investigate. These dimensions are entered directly into a text box provided for each dimension. You can also enter a gravitational constant for any planet you wish. For example, your pendulum might have an L dimension of 20 rather than 12, and you might wish to see how this pendulum would behave on Jupiter. After entering parameters for the pendulum you wish to investigate, click on the Accept Dimensions button. Once your dimensions are accepted, you always have the option of resetting the whole system back to the sample dimensions present when the program loads. When your pendulum's dimensions are established, you can move on to select the initial displacements that will initiate the pendulum's motion. This is done by clicking anywhere in either or both of the bounding circles representing the horizontal plane in which the pendulum weights are allowed to move. When you are satisfied with the initial state of your model, you can begin to emulate its subsequent motion by clicking on the Commence button. You can pause and resume the emulator whenever you wish. And you can always reset the model when you want to enter a new set of parameters or investigate some other set of initial conditions. In sum, you have a video game that embodies the equations of motion derived by our analysis. If the analysis has been correct, the video game should faithfully emulate any physical pendulum you can create as it proceeds from any initial conditions you can devise.